folks, we are live, and uh, this studio has been completed for six months. We've done a lot of taped interviews in here. Coming up on Thursday, September 1st, we're going to start at 7 o'clock every evening, uh, the InfoWars nightly news. Uh, but we're also going to be doing a lot of special reports in here, and the studio is going to look different when you see the actual uh, nightly news show. But I still want to continue to do special live reports for Prison Planet uh, dot TV viewers because there's so much news. Uh, the scale and pace of events in the world is only accelerating because of the large world population and the advances of technology. The establishment has actually uh, gotten behind the curve of trying to propagandize people and worldwide liberty lovers have, have seized the moment and we are waking up millions and millions of people every month just with Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com but the millions of other activists across the planet are waking up even more people. And uh, one of those uh, uh, activists out there having a huge effect uh, with his weapon, the truth, is Mike Adams of Natural News. He's going to be with us for the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, then we're going to go to break uh, and come back in studio uh, with another great Texan. And, of course, that is Sheriff Richard Mack to get into the police state and a lot of really important news dealing with Operation Fast and Furious, the White House shipping guns into Mexico to then blame the Second Amendment for the murder and destabilization down there. Uh, we'll also get into executive orders dealing with the government being able to seize any U.S. citizens' bank accounts without even a court order and for no reason. Uh, moves to federalize the police uh, and to put U.S. military on the streets of America along with TSA. We'll be discussing all of that in the second half of this hour and a half uh, special transmission via Prison Planet. Dot TV this evening. Uh, but in the next 45 minutes with Mike Adams, we're going to get into a host of issues. Uh, more and more governments are admitting, hey, we've had a huge secret cloning program. We're not just splicing spiders with goats and putting other insect and fish genes in salmon. We're mixing humans with chimpanzees, uh, with jellyfish, uh, you name it. We don't just have glow-in-the-dark cats. We've got glow-in-the-dark people. But because they're part animal, they have no rights, but you can't see them. That's all over the news. Uh, also, they're announcing, hey, we're taking over the food supply. And uh, Monsanto's been told, not under law, but new regulations, you can GMO any crop, including grass in somebody's yard if you want, and we're not going to let the public know um, that it's even GMO. Uh, only in America, in fact, one of my crew today saw this article and said, only in America, FDA says walnuts are illegal drugs. And if you think that's a joke, I'm sorry, you have woken up uh, in the twilight zone. Uh, this is not a joke. They've also, of course, recently SWAT teamed Amish over raw milk uh, and have uh, SWAT teamed um, farms that are growing things like aloe vera, saying that they are drugs. And the real expert on this uh, is another, uh, again, great lover of liberty who now lives right here in central Texas. Uh, right here in Austin, Mike Adams, and he's here in studio with us. We're going to get into the, some of the issues uh, I mentioned here, Mike, but uh, there's also uh, been um, moves not to only let them GMO any crop they want, but also to go after uh, minerals, supplements, and other things, and you're here to report on that for us tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Alex. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on your, your broadcast. Uh, really cool studio here, by the way. Um, it's almost where do you want to start? We could talk about the supplements and the, the freedom issues there. Is that, is that where you want to begin? Well, let's go through item? whatever you think is most important. I was just throwing right. out a few of the items. We've, we've got about 20 or 30 here. Okay. All right. On the GMO front, let me just start there because it's a quick item. The USDA recently said when Scott's miracle Grow attempted to get approval for a genetically modified grass seed that any, anybody could buy. You could buy it at Home Depot and Lowe's once it comes out, and you could put it on your lawn or you could put it on a schoolyard, or you could put it, you know, on a playground. And then you could spray all of those plots with Roundup, which is an, a selective herbicide, and the grass would resist the Roundup. So this is, this is like what they're doing with agriculture. Now they want to do it with your front lawn. The USDA, in response to this petition by Scott's miracle Grow, said, we cannot regulate it. We're hands off now. In fact, you go ahead, you, you basically have full approval, but not really approval. It's just, you can do whatever you want with this grass. Go ahead and make it and sell it and spread it all across the it's country. It's a free-for-all. It's a free-for-all. 
the USDA said because of a, of a certain language element in the way they regulate GMOs today, which requires a, quote, plant pathogen in order to, for it to be regulated, but since this GMO didn't contain a plant pathogen, then it's considered off hands by the USDA. And by pathogen, the, the, the corn and things they've engineered pharmacological pesticides yes. into where the plant grows its own pesticide and the bugs won't eat it, but humans do. And a lot of people, a lot of farmers notice now their, their pigs won't eat GMO. Right. Insects won't come on your table and eat it. And they, we wonder why we're getting so sick. Yeah. Well, this plant pathogen is a hook, a regulatory hook. This is what allowed the, the USDA to regulate GMO corn and to regulate alfalfa, which they approved anyway. They, never, they were never really going to control it. They were just acting like they were regulating That's it. That's because Monsanto and others have literally stacked all the regulatory commissions with their alumni. Exactly, exactly. But now because of this situation, Scott's miracle Grow could put out a GMO grass as early as early 2012. We could have neighborhoods across the country now putting GMO grass on their front lawns and spraying those lawns with this Roundup herbicide all across the country. And it could, it could be perfectly legal. It could be done on playgrounds, schoolyards, around government offices, buildings, parks, you name it, everywhere. And, and, and from your research and the um, different uh, patent filings I've seen, basically we've had, what, eight to nine of the major food crops being genetically engineered in the last few decades, and the untold horrors and all the studies where in three generations with most of these crops, it makes the guinea pigs totally sterile and have uh, tiny genitals and in their, in their, in their hair growing in their mouths. Now they're assaulting everything, the, the herb plants, the grasses, the trees, everything. It's a total global assault on every front with the trade winds already carrying this everywhere. Uh, all sorts of uh, mutagenic uh, plants now. That's uh, the issue, is genetic contamination. W now with the crops, the genetic contamination was already quite bad, and farmers were having their crops contaminated, their, their organic crops contaminated, and they, w they were not able to sell them into the organic marketplace because of that contamination. And then Monsanto sued the farmer and said, you're growing our patented seeds without permission. We're going to sue you. That'd be like if I dumped motor oil in your backyard publicly and then called the cops and said, I dump motor oil in my cabin's backyard. Exactly. Arrest him for stealing my motor oil. That's just what it's like. But we wish but it was motor oil. This is a it's even worse, yeah, because motor oil, you could clean that up. There is a remediation strategy for motor oil. There is no remediation for genetic contamination. We are talking an out-of-control genetic invasion, a Pandora's box across the entire planet now being accelerated by the USDA's refusal to regulate these untested, complete quack science, genetically modified organisms. That's what we're dealing with here is quack science. The crazy part, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a million points on this to cover, Mike, but I see articles all the time where these big agri companies go illegally into countries and have research labs and plant their crops right next to uh, the, uh, the original, uh, you know, true non-GMO crops and then infect them as well. And I remember seeing an National Geographic a decade ago, where, Mon where a Monsanto executive bragged, yes, we're going to infect everything, and you're not going to have a choice. I mean, yeah, that's right. They, they, they know. They know that if they give you a choice, people will choose non-GMOs. This is what they said about the labeling. Why don't they want to allow the labeling of GMOs in grocery stores so a consumer could have a box of product and they can read on the back label, oh, this contains GMOs. Why don't they want that? Well, a, a top GMO executive said, you might as well put a skull and crossbones on the box because if people know there are GMOs in it, they won't buy it. I mean, it's, there is some common sense still left out there. You know, uh, even though there's the fluoride and even though there's the vaccines and the pharmace pharmaceuticals, at some level, people understand that playing God with our seeds and with our food and with our genes is inherently wrong, if not downright evil. Well, let's just sit back for a moment because... 10, 15 years ago, you couldn't find organic food in most grocery stores. Now, in the last few years, it's been displacing uh, the GMO garbage. And so they've basically changed the regulations in the last few years to where you aren't even told, and the companies don't have to tell you. And then when uh, organic milk companies come out and want to tell people we're GMO and hormone-free, they get sued. Yes. So, I mean, this is so diabolical for anybody that's questioning you know, I want to continue down this line 
and look at how they're trying to totally legalize a free-for-all, yeah. while at the same time going after mainline vitamins and minerals. And for folks that are in doubt about this, it's already happening uh, in Europe. I mean, I want you as the expert to really break that down for people. But uh, getting into cloning, and we'll cover this more later, but here's the Daily Mail. 150 animal hybrids grown in UK labs. Embryos have been produced secretly. Well, uh, it's not really secret. We've now discovered this has been going on since at least 1965. Yeah. And uh, all the genetic engineers I've talked to, including people that have worked at these companies, say this is already giving rise to super viruses. This is the reason you're having so many weird illnesses and cancer and diabetes. We are being poisoned. And then I read the Rockefeller Foundation documents, and I've got some articles here where the Bill and Melinda Gates um, Foundation have basically uh, teamed up with them and uh, they're going into Africa saying, if you want your IMF and World Bank money, you've got to accept vaccines, you've got to accept GMOs. And then you read the public documents, the Rockefeller Foundation, they admit, hey, here's our patent for a vaccine that really sterilizes you. Here's our patent for this rice that really sterilizes you. And then it's the very rice they're pushing on them. So, so of course, they're not letting us label it and know. This is about, in every mammal species, being completely barren within three generations. Now, that, that's... Yeah less than a year with guinea pigs, but with humans, we're talking 60 years, but exactly. we're already a generation into it, and we see fertility plummeting. I mean, this is so diabolical. You're, you're right, and the reaction to this won't be evident in the human species until perhaps another generation or two down the road, when I expect to see mass infertility. They are already killing the future of the human race right now. It's just that people don't know it yet because the infertility hasn't exactly kicked in. I mean, keep in mind that a, a, a female baby inside her mother's womb, all right, she is born with all the eggs that she's going to have in her entire lifetime. So there is a two-generation effect. So the, the, the women today in their 20s, let's say, who are having babies, their eggs were formed when they were in their mother's womb when the mother was growing up back before a lot of this GMOs and poison was out there. So they, th that's, you, you, what we're seeing today is basically eggs that were created before the mass poisoning of the planet. But that, this is the last generation of that. Now the GMOs have kicked in, the mass pharmaceutical poisoning of pregnant women has kicked in, the vaccines have been, have been spreading like crazy and they're pushing more and more. Today the women who are getting pregnant, when they form a little girl inside their, their bodies, and the eggs that are in that, that, that baby girl, those eggs are largely infertile. It's just not evident yet. The, the, by the way, for viewers out there, Mike, I lose sleep over this. I can be exhausted at 1 a.m. and I'll go shoot YouTube videos talking about this because Aaron Dykes and the rest of my crew, all we do is read their own publications. Yeah. And they sit back, admit they're doing this. Uh, Bill Gates even goes on TED TV and says, hey, we've got to do this to reduce per, you know, world population. Yeah. They don't even it's veil sick. it. Yeah. You, you see the headline, uh, Bill Gates, Ted Turner, uh, British royalty, Oprah Winfrey, meet in secret at Rockefeller University to discuss world government and population reduction. And you just said it. With the old vaccines and the pesticides and the toxins, we've seen a massive uh, increase in infertility in women 20, 30, 40 years old. Uh, we've seen an 87% sperm count drop in Western Europe and the United States. Right. Uh, we see in all the countries where uh, the BT corn is grown, on average about half the honeybees dead, in yep. some areas even more. We are seeing literal mass murder against the biosphere run by the very fake environmentalists that preach at us as a joke about carbon dioxide that plants live off of part of the life cycle. And, and I get chills talking about this because yeah. I have to look at these literal control freaks carrying out a slickly packaged uh, proto-Nazi, because the, the, uh, th this system in England and the U.S. W w created the Nazis. They were just a spinoff that moved too quickly in their words and only targeted certain groups.